Hello again, fans of Maine craft beer, wine, spirits, and the businesses that are affiliated with those industries. My name is Don Littlefield, and you are watching another virtual tour presented by the Maine Brew Bus. Uh, I'm your guide today, and uh, it's, I think our special guest is ready to join. Uh, there he is. Hello, yes. Michael. <laughs> hey, Michael. How's it going? Good, man. Give me a quick second here. Uh, this is episode 14 of our virtual tour series. It features that man. That's Michael Fava. He's the head brewer at Oxbow Brewing Company with three <laughs> locations in Maine. And I'm really excited to talk to him. And he's nervous, everybody, because he is sending me messages on the side that he's never been live before. And I'm, I, don't think that, I don't think that's true. I think you're live all the time. You, uh, you're a very creative and artistic person, so... <laughs> anyway, I'll keep you. I'll keep you hanging for another couple seconds. But uh, this this uh, episode is produced by uh, Victoria Fura, who is uh, behind the scenes. She's collecting the questions and comments that you're able to share with us. So on the bottom of the screen where it says comment, you can put in those questions, comments, or if you want to send some love to Oxbow, the team in the woods in Newcastle, about a special beer that you enjoy. Uh, like any of those there, you can do that. So uh, without further ado, I want to say uh, hi to a few folks who have joined us. T. Lewis underscore NH, Suds, Ma Suds Master Flex, um, T and Honey, UFF, Brewmaster Michael from Brewery Extrava. And uh, you're getting a really special shout out here, Michael. Uh, uh, Chi Luta Hell says Total Babe. So there you go. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> without further ado. Hi, Michael. How's it going? Good. Now, I'll probably just call you Fava from now on because that's what everybody calls you. So uh, thanks for joining us. Tell us where you're at today. You're in uh, Newcastle. Right now I'm in Newcastle and uh, I'm in our original tasting room here on the premises. Figured any tour should start and end in the tasting room. So I'm following great. suit. <laughs> you're doing a great job so far. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to do this and um, and you know, to, to tell a little bit about the story. I think uh, the story of what's happening with Oxbow is pretty dynamic with the three different locations that have three different sort of really customer-facing operations. So we'll get into that a little bit. But let's start at the very beginning. For those who do not know the amazing story of Oxbow, tell us how it began way back. Oh, well, it all started on this property back in 2011. Um, I'm sure most of you watching know Tim Adams, the wonderful and amazing. Uh, him and a uh, business partner started Oxbow uh, back then. And uh, why not on this property? It's an 18 acre farm. Uh, there is a barn which houses uh, the brew house and all the brewing equipment, which we will see in a moment after I crack a beer here in a few seconds. Nice. Um, and that's kind of how my story got involved. Uh, Tim contacted me. I was brewing down in Philadelphia and on the side was rigging and moving equipment around and Oxbow bought all the initial brewing equipment for me in Philadelphia. I shipped it up to Tim. He installed it and got Oxbow uh, off the ground back in 2011. Um, that's a, a quick and dirty. But, um, <laughs> and he never left. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, about, an, about a year after the company got started, I, I followed up, um, stayed in contact with Tim and he sure. was looking for a brewer as the business was was growing and more brew days were coming on the schedule and he uh you know i was the first i was number one uh full-time employee coming on as a brewer amazing, so. amazing. and uh, we want to say hi to some friends of yours real quick Ud beer cell has joined shelton brothers has joined oh. um so we say hi to our friends who make delicious beer happen for all of us oh love both of them I know, right? Exactly. Uh, while you uh, while you get your your beer cracked there, I'll tell you that I uh, I missed my opportunity today uh, for curbside pickup in Portland, but that's the very very good reason. I'm at the very last day of a mandatory quarantine. I did travel to Europe uh, two weeks ago, uh, and so even curbside pickup is not something I should be doing today. But I I did pick something that would approximate something that I think an Oxbow beer would be, and this is a uh, a beer that has uh, apricot, grape, peach in it as well. This is from uh, Foundation Brewing Company. I did put it in a Goods from the Woods glass. And uh, uh, nice. yeah, special there. So this one is called Sparkles My Jam. What are you going to enjoy while we talked? Well, it's a good question. There's much to choose from. Look at this wonderful Dizzy. Are you going to help me? Oh, 
It's Dizzy the Cat, everybody. That's the world famous uh, o- Oxbow Cat right there. Dizzy's more famous than any of them. <laughs> he has more followers than me. You can follow him. <laughs> yes. Dizzy Beer Cat. But uh, I think today, since we are in Maine, I'll go for one of these Maine State Lagers. Ooh. Let's go with that. Maine State Lager. Excellent. Yeah, beautiful. Look All right, that. go ahead and Look at go ahead logo. and go ahead and crack that. I'll give you a few more uh, shout outs here. Uh, UUF, I think I said UFF earlier, but it's UUF says love you, Michael. Our uh, beer two man says hang loose. Uh, Rela Rela Avo Zero says hello from Chile. Oh. Uh, Kings Cooch says I want to be like Mike, <laughs> which is fine. Um, B Muley or Mully says is it free if you boof it? <laughs> ben Bazzi says, hey, boys. Uh, GB Morrow says, hey, guys, from Italy. Um, and so, yeah, we've got, a, we've got those. We, we do have an actual question. Who comes up with the names of the beers at Oxbow? And uh, the person who asked is Chaluda Hell. Uh, they say my favorite is Cezandre 3000. <laughs> nice. That's a good uh, one. A lot of them happen organically, but uh, I think for the most part, Tim is, is the number one namer. I have a few in there, and then our director of sales, Greg Jasker, has quite a few as well. Uh, <laughs> but we try to keep it pretty democratic and pretty open. Uh, sometimes harder than making the beers, finding the right <laughs> name, uh, especially one that's not taken. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> do you ever work backwards like musicians do sometimes? Do you ever have a name first and then try to create a beer to fit the name? Very few, and I'm trying to – it's usually the other way around for yeah. sure. Um, which is great, you know. Yeah. Th- think of a flavor, make that first, and then try to try to fit it. But there, there certainly are a few where it was like, wow, that'd be a perfect beer name. All right, yeah. let's let's work with that as the starting point. Nice, nice. Uh, just to correct, it's not UUF. It was UFF earlier, and uh, they say hi. Uh, Jillian Nadeau, who runs tours in New Brunswick, says hi to Dizzy. It's uh, Dizzy Beer Cat <laughs> on Instagram. Northeast Cycle says hello, and uh, the comments are coming fast and furious. You can share in the conversation by putting your comments, your questions, or your uh, love letters to Oxbow in uh, the bottom of the screen here. And I'm going to ask about uh, the next step. You ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. So things started to really go down, uh, you know, uh, just over two weeks ago now, I guess. What, what were some of the signals you were getting, and what were some of the early decisions that, o- that Oxbow made in terms of uh, safety of the customers? Yeah, I, I, again, will bring up Tim's name. Shout out, Tim. Uh, he was really at the forefront of this. I think we may be one of the first businesses to really take huge strides, um, uh, realizing that this is serious and, and making serious decisions, which I can't imagine is easy for anyone in these times. Um, I think one thing that helped us lead to, the, to a lot of the decision making was our international ties. We do have quite a, quite a good, a lot of friends in Japan and Italy. We do send beer and sell beer in those countries. Uh, and Tim hopped on the horn with some of those friends and just kind of got uh, a first person take on what was happening uh, over there. And then realizing that that's what's moving across the whole globe. Uh, so it was, it was pretty fast and furious and it was not a, uh, a time of what ifs it was this this is what's happening and and i really again have to applaud tim for for getting out in front of it we're able to spend a lot of energy and time on uh improving our our processes and and trying to you know obviously everything's changing day to day but instead of spending energy on what should we be doing or should we do this or that we were able to spend energy on hey let's get gloves let's uh, figure out how we can package beer at safe distances. Like we were able to direct our resources to making uh, safer work environments, and, and yeah. which, which has been great. It, you know, and I mentioned you've got the, the three different locations. So the the brewery uh, in Newcastle is where the, all the beer is made. And so that is in some ways, that's a, a refuge. That's a place you can go. You can shut all the doors and just make delicious beer, but it's also got a, the, customer facing tasting room which uh people in that area definitely rely on then you come to portland and that is a place where beer is just uh basically finished it's uh, barrel aged it's it's blended it's uh it's it's you know finalized but that's completely customer facing 
And then you've got the beer garden in Oxford, which is, you know, a fairly new part of the puzzle, which is a place where you're literally asking guests to come in, go cross country skiing, sit down, enjoy some pizza and beer. So um, how did those three different locations factor into the decision making? Uh, well, I, I think it made the decision making very, very easy. Uh, most of our coworkers are forward facing front of house tasting room and uh bartenders and servers so um you know unfortunately with no customers coming in it's it's really hard to have those co-workers stay on board um so i think it's a realization a lot of restaurants and bars and tasting rooms have come to where uh, unfortunately a lot of those folks have to be on unemployment right now uh which is yeah. you know, super sad and terrible to to come to but yeah again i think we probably had some of the first uh first co-workers applying for unemployment in the state because we were very quick to come to that unfortunate uh realization yeah and we're talking with michael fava who's the head brewer um and a key part of oxbow brewing company uh in maine in uh newcastle is the, the the home base and that's where he's speaking to us from today my name is don littlefield i'm the guide on uh, this edition of our virtual tour series presented by the main brew bus a um, couple of comments here uh kathy fura our friend from new hampshire says italio disco yummy yes. um <laughs> Ben Bozzi's going to make me do an imitation here, and uh, I don't actually know the line, so I'll do it the best I can. Are you ready? Ooh, there it is, Italio Disco. Italo Disco. Uh, ben Bozzi asks, is it true that the love you make is equal to the love you take? Oh, no one knows that more well than Ben Bozzi. Okay. That's He's supposed a giver to be Chris. and a taker. <laughs> it's supposed to be a Chris Varley voice. I had no practice on that one whatsoever. Uh, Jay Easy Wider says, hang loose, and that all this is surreal, that Jesus is surreal. Uh, Chaluda Hell says, I spent my honeymoon at the Oxbow House, the Airbnb behind the brewery in uh, Newcastle. Sure do love you guys with a heart, which is great. And, um, and then we've got Oud Beer Cell says, still need to visit the beer garden. Tell Tim... You got a message to send to Tim. Tell Tim to organize a beer festival. It would be a nice next step and a good excuse to come over to Maine. Uh, we agree. Bring some of your delicious beer, too. That would be great. Um, there's, there's your old beer cell Tim Tacker right it. there up in our tasting room. That's a good logo. They've already right. mentioned that uh, it's a good logo right there. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about uh, what's happening there in Newcastle. So uh, you're, are you actively brewing beer? Because some of your beer takes months, if not years, to finish. It's true. Uh, we're making sure that our, our tanks are full because well, pretty much every beer we make can, uh, has a really good shelf life. That's one of our, our core principles in brewing mm -hmm. beer. Um, we are up on a farm in the middle of the woods. We use all well water. We're on a septic system. Uh, we side stream as much as we can. It's very difficult to make the beer that we do. So we really focus on beers that are going to really stand the test of time and have a very long shelf life. Um, and, and, you know, this is terrible incident is obviously, uh, terrible for everyone, but at least our beers are really sturdy and um, can last for a long while. So we're making sure that the tanks are full. Obviously we're on a condensed brewing schedule. We've moved everything to package only, so cans and bottles, um, which was a, a pretty big transition for us. We were at around 60% uh, draft, so uh, yeah. a, a pretty, pretty big change there. And yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, luckily we're brewing. I think it's keeping us sane up here in, in Newcastle. We have a pretty tight crew as it is, um, but you know, I think everyone's kind of looking for things to do, and, and uh, a brewer's got to brew, you know? That, yeah, that exactly. Really puts your mind at ease, at least for the, those hours that you're on the brew deck. Have you run into uh, to supply issues now that you're trying to can much more than you ever planned to? Um. Not yet. I, we certainly anticipate that that is an option. Um, I know there's a big shortage on crowlers in particular. Yeah. Not, we don't fill crowlers currently, so that's uh, a bit of a blessing in the short term. But we'll see. You know, things are changing day to day for sure. 
Uh, yeah. You know, trying to be in contact with suppliers. One of uh, one of the big things is obviously raw materials, uh, especially grain coming over from international suppliers. That's something that's a, a scary thing. Um, yeah, we're, we're monitoring everything day to day. One of the biggest things was, was kind of the easiest to change is a lot of the beers we had planned that were in tanks that we were going to do draft. Now we're transitioning to canning them. Uh, we didn't have labels for and some other packaging material on hand. So there's a little bit of a delay switching gears on, on those batches. Um, but again, we have, we luckily make pretty hearty beer and yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's good. And you know, some we've talked to some other brewers who, yeah, they didn't have enough cans, they didn't have enough labels, they didn't, you know, didn't have the uh, all the materials that they need. And sometimes you realize those things down the road, like, oh, we'll just can more, but we don't have enough cans. Okay, yeah. Yeah. now how do we do that? So, <clears throat> um, let's give you another question here. Um, actually, I'll take the comment first. Kathy Fura says, "Don't quit your day job." Regarding the Chris Farley impression, yeah, I'd have to know the <laughs> reference in order to to do that uh, any justice. So uh, I apologize for that. Uh, Kings Cooch asked, when did your sour program start and where do you see it going? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, the very first batch of beer ever brewed at Oxbow was a uh, mixed firm sour beer uh, known as yeah. Ar- Arboreal, if you guys are familiar. Yeah. Um, and I don't know who the viewers are, but uh, yeah, that, that kind of was a happenstance. I'll tell the quick story. Sure. Where, um we had, or I wasn't here yet, so Tim had some barrels on hand or he was waiting for the glycol system to go, to be installed in the tanks, the stainless tanks to be hooked up. But he had these barrels and always wanted to do barrel fermentation. That was part of the plan anyway. So those mm-hmm. early days, he was a, had some ingredients on hand for to make arboreal. Um, and instead of waiting for all the glycol and everything to be set up, he uh, brewed that first batch and knocked out directly into oak, which, uh, of course, is something that we've embraced with a lot of brands, but especially Arboreal being of the woods. Uh, it goes straight from the brew kettle right into oak uh, for primary fermentation and then aged uh, further in, in oak. It's very oak forward beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, the very first batch of Oxbow beer was was – a mixed fermentation beer right in barrels. I, I would have got that yes. trivia question uh, wrong, but it did help me to remember that I have, and I'm trying to pull up, I've got a series of questions, trivia questions about Oxbow, which I might ask a couple of you. Uh, I guess some other comments here. Uh, BM Fasulo says, uh, Fishman got a, f- BM Fasulo 207, Fishman got a fish. Good work, boys. Um, they also, BM Fasulo also sends party emojis in a high. Uh, Chris Birch, a septic, says appreciate your dedication. Uh, Kings Cooch asks another tough question. What's the movie of the night, Mike? Oh, that's always <laughs> that's always a tough one. Uh, I'll have to see. Um, there's a good chance it's coming to America with Eddie Murphy. That's, <laughs> that's probably my, that's one probably. of my favorites. It's been over. I don't know. It's been at least a year and a half since I've seen it, and it's in my top three movies of all time. And I think. Uh, <laughs> trying to stick to comedy to, to get a smile on my face and get some laughs in these days. So that's fair. Um, Rella Jav asks, what kind of beer do you enjoy brewing the most? Wow. I mean, they're all, they're all really amazing. I think, uh, you know, one that definitely has to jump out is native wild. It's our hundred percent spontaneous, uh, beer. I don't know how many people out there have had, at it but we've been we own, we do own a coal ship we'll walk over there and take a peek in a minute and Great. um yeah we've been brewing 100 percent spontaneous beer since uh 2014 <laughs> and um you know, we do leave that beer 100 percent spontaneous but we have incorporated the cultures captured uh in those beers in our house mixed culture which we make a lot, all of our mixed fermentation beers with so nice. it's a really really fun fun thing to have uh it's a crazy thing to brew you kind of throw out everything you know about brewing and we follow the traditional methods that the the belgians are using um for their spontaneous beers and it, you know most of them go against uh any brewing book that you would read right 
So it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and you have to leave a lot up to the, the magic of the microbes that are in the air. And, 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 you know, like I've said before, they like, has this magical feeling. You kind of try to give it the, do all the things the right way, or at least the traditional way. And, and yeah. luckily we've had really good, uh, good luck and success with the way that beer turns out. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So I've got a series of questions. There's like conversations going on uh, that are not even involving you and I, but this is great. In the meantime, can you make your way towards the uh, the brew house so that we can uh, talk, look over there? Uh, so we've got Brewbeard started by saying Philly, like shout out to Philly. The Baco said, Mike, I used to work with you at Nodding Head Brewing. Ah, yes. Okay. And then that caused Brewbeard to ask, was that your first brewing job at Nodding Head? Uh, Nottingham was my second brewing job. My first was at Dock Street out in uh, West Philadelphia. So, right on. Nice. Um, Con- <clears throat> real yeah. quick, so I can yeah. get on the move here, I'm going to be using a new amazing thing. The 16-ounce Yeti Cooler Koozie. Would you look at that? And I hate hiding this amazing logo, but I do want my beer to stay cold, and I will be fair. on the go. So. It's fair. So you've got a secure <laughs> ring there. You've got your gloves on for safety, and now you can go on the move. All right. All right. That's yeah. perfect. Now we're ready. Thank you, uh, Yeti. You can send the uh, the, co- the commission check our way if you if you'd like. <laughs> uh, Yeti, Yeti products are fantastic. That's for sure. Uh, Greg Jasker says, "Fava, I don't want to cause a drama, but have you ever drank Java and ate guava while wearing a balaclava?" <laughs> He's putting me on hot lava over here. Uh, <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. I always Concrete Chow tells us that the sequel to coming in America... Fava coming... Java. Am I cho- getting choppy here? You did for a second, but you're better now. Yeah, when I go... There's another router in the uh, in the brewery, so... Perfect. Perfect. I was trying uh, to fill the time in the middle, but you were talking, so... Yeah. <laughs> Um, Concrete Chow says the sequel to Coming to America is coming fall of 2020 with all the original cast. You probably already know that. I heard. I haven't heard a hard date on it, so that's good to hear that they are moving forward with it. Nice. Uh, So that's the cool ship that we're looking at. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, we had this uh, manufactured in 2014, and that's the first time we put it to use. Um, us, Us... Living in Maine, we know uh, Allagash certainly was the, the first in the U.S. to have one of these pieces of equipment. You can see it's not all that sophisticated. It's a shallow, long dish, more or less. Uh, ours is made of stainless. Other Others out there are made of copper. Uh, but basically, right from boiling from the kettle, we fill up this cool ship, and uh, it, it'll be at boiling temperatures, very hot. And overnight the cool air and temperatures of outside will cool all of the wort down to fermentation temperatures. Uh, and it, the surface area of it being long and shallow allows it to cool more rapidly rather than it being a big thermal mass of boiling liquid. Uh, so this was actually a very popular way for most brewers of any style to, to cool or at least partially cool the wort before fermentation. Um, And in Belgium, it it really took shape for Lambic production as they uh, they held on to the tradition of using it. They didn't uh, upgrade their brewing equipment with other cooling technologies that became more in fashion. Um, But a lot of what they realized is that the wild microbes from the air are able to get into the wart because you're just it's open to the air. It's not in a sanitary closed environment. And that's what we're looking for when we're when we're making spontaneous beer. We want those wild microbes to get into the wort, inoculate the wort, and then over a, a year to two years, it, it ferments in oak and, and referments in the bottle, and you have this delicious, amazing mixed fermentation, 100% spontaneous beer that you did not pitch any yeast or bacteria into. Um, again, native wild. If you haven't had it, I have to give a shout out. It's an amazing beer. Mm, that's great yeah and not too many places uh have cool ships and uh yours is open air there's no no enclosure around it uh you just kind of want the the world to be part of the beer making process yeah just shying 
Nice. We are outside. <laughs> we are outside. <laughs> That's the tasting room we just came from. There's the cool ship right there. And then uh, going into the brewery. Here we go. So for those who might be watching later on a podcast, we're entering the brewery, which is just, uh, I don't know, 100 yards away from the tasting room. And tell us what we're looking at. Uh, so I always, since we might have some new viewers, Oxbow Brewing Company, our nice script logo there over our brew house. Uh, this is our second brew house. Um, it's a oversized 15 barrel, um, three vessel decoction setup, which is awesome from specific, mm. specific mechanical. So we're, uh, about a year and a half using this kit and, um, our, our beers have never been better. It's really awesome. Before this, we we're on a very small undersized seven barrel system from 1992 and doing all the, all the brewing on there, <laughs> uh, which was, you know, got, we got our labor full. This way we're allowed to <laughs> maximize time and efficiency and, and uh, do some decoction brewing as well, which has been a really fun challenge and, and, and thing we're able to do with this equipment. Mm. Uh, and we have, so we built this addition on there, see some fans. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I was like, going, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool view of the... That's a cool view, yeah. Cellar. Um, Just looking right down. And that was that part of the original structure on the on the property? No, so what we're standing in now was the our walk-in cooler. Okay. Um, right. So it was, it is the original cement pad, but uh, we just had a walk-in here. And since opening Portland, that's where we run all of our distribution out of. Um, any beer that gets packaged here goes directly there, same day yeah. of packaging via a box truck. So the, the, the walk-in ended up being pretty empty most of the time, and we're like... Wow, we already we, have a we can use the space. <laughs> a foundation poured. Why not? Why not use it? <laughs> uh, let me throw a few more comments in here and I'll let you know we've got uh, a few more minutes with with Mike. We might go a little past a half an hour on this one. It's been pretty fun and entertaining. Half hour? Um, I thought we had a full hour. Uh, we can do a full hour, man, if you want, for <laughs> sure. You were you not nervous anymore? Um, Lamar walks as Oxbow is possibly the most underrated brewery in America which is great. Uh, the Baco, who used to work with you at Nodding, uh, says, right on. I love to see Philly folks doing great things. UFF says, hashtag cool ship. Uh, <laughs> Bill Jr. 1980 says, we had farmhouse on tap at our wedding, so nice. thank you. I guess it's still still going well, which is great. Um, Brewbeard says, I love the specific mechanical systems, and that's not a name I hear a lot, so it must be very specific, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> then we've got two questions. Um, Brewmaster Michael from uh, Brewery Extrava asks, what are your top three desert island beers? Wow. <laughs> that is a good one. Uh, <laughs> I would have to say Terrace Bulba from uh, De La Seine Brewery in Brussels has to be number one. I can drink that beer every day. Low ABV, high flavor, amazing mm -hmm. thirst quenching bitterness. Um, yeah, that's just perfect. Um, okay. especially, yeah. So that's, that's gotta be on there. I'm uh, with you on that one for sure. <laughs> I was lucky enough, uh, back in October to make a trip over to, uh, to the Czech Republic for the first time and got to drink Pilsner Quell straight from the, uh, from the pitch line giant barrels in the cellar and if I can have that every day on a desert island, I would be very happy. Again, similar qualities to it. It's a super thirst quenching, delicious beer that you can just drink over and over. Uh, never get bored of it. Uh, mm. One to go. One, one to, to go. go. Yeah. I would, I would have to say <laughs> that it would be Farmhouse Pale Ale. Yes, so, yes. I am a company man. But that beer... <laughs> It really scratches a lot of itches. Uh, it's not too much in any one way. You have a lot of yeast-driven flavors to it. A little kiss of American hops. Uh, I just never get bored of it. It always amazes me. that it, That's one you can either close your eyes and drink and, and not think about it, or you can really start dissecting the flavors. Uh, it just has a really nice balance. So. Yeah. 
That's great. Those are good answers. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. <clears throat> Our friend uh, Jeff Grundy from uh, Portland says, Goods from the Woods is a lot of fun. And uh, the main bus has shuttled people up there for, I think, the last four or five years. Uh, and it is a lot of fun. And we hope that we're able to do that. The nice part about that particular uh, quote, beer festival, end quote, is that it is pretty remote. You're literally out in the woods behind the brewery, adjacent to the brewery, and that's uh, that's super helpful. And Mike's now pointing out Maine Malt House from Mapleton, Maine. And um, are you sourcing a lot of your uh, products from Maine? Uh, we are, for sure. And that one thing I wanted to mention with the beer I'm drinking, the Maine State Lager, uh, this was a, a fun beer we made to commemorate the bicentennial of the state of Maine which, uh, of course, was founded in March 1820. Uh, That's right. Part of the Missouri Compromise, absolutely. He knows it. Yeah. Uh, so this, uh, you know, being called Maine State Lager, it is 100% Maine sourced ingredients. All of the grain is from uh, Maine Malt House, the Buck Farm. And then all of the hops are uh, whole cone cascade hops from Alna Hops, which is uh -huh. only three miles up the road. We have an amazing right. relationship with them. And our uh, our staff, we have a full on uh, full staff harvest party up there every September, which is really amazing. And we do a wet hop beer, but then we also dried out some hops and and held on to them. And that's what what's in this. So if you guys see Maine State Lager, support your state and Oslo. And, love it. Yeah, shout out there. <clears throat> shout out there. I love it. Uh, I told you that, you know, with the Goods from the Woods, we actually de derived some trivia questions about Oxbow, which we use sometimes. So I'm going to give you, I think it's the toughest one on the list and the one I think you may or may not know. Are you ready? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> so there's an actual source for this, but I'm not going to tell you the source because people could Google it. Uh, what was one of the names that was almost used for Oxbow Brewing Company? So there was a... Uh. A prominent one that was almost used, it did not end up being used. Do you know the answer? Zephyr? Ooh, now that's one I didn't know. Uh -huh. But uh, <clears throat> but no, that's not what I have. Do you have any others that you recall? Uh, for the company name? For the company name, yeah. Uh, that, that would be, that's the only one I know of. Okay, so I'll put that up there to any really, really strong fans of Oxbow. This was, uh, we, this was in an article, and it uh, disclosed that the name uh, almost went this way. So if you answer it correctly, then we'll send you a prize, wow. and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cover this in the end of the, the conversation. So I feel, uh, I feel ashamed that I don't know the answer to that. I, I'm sure you're not wrong, but Zephyr was not actually disclosed in the article. So... Uh, <laughs> so uh, so what we're, you know, with the brew house and with your, what you said is that the beers, you're trying to keep the tanks full. Uh, are there other new beers that are on the horizon that we should be looking for? Yeah. Uh, one we're really excited for is a beer named Hexen. Um, it was brewed by all of the female coworkers at Oxbow. One of our, one of our brewers is female. We're pretty much a down the middle split, uh, which is awesome. And, um, we made a an, 100% an, uh, female brew for uh, to support the Pink Boot Society, and they knocked it out of the park. It's in the tanks right now, getting packaged on Tuesday, so it'll be out within three weeks for sure. Mm. Uh, we're doing green 750 glass bottles, which is going to be a really nice package. The label is is one of the more beautiful ones. I, you know, I, I think anyone that is familiar with Oxbow, our labels are always really amazing. Um, Will Sears is our, our you know, lead designer and creative eye, an amazing artist. Um, mm -hmm. He works with uh, Molly Walsh, which is our other designer, and she knocked it out of the park with the Hexen logo, which you'll see. Um, cool. That's a very drinkable 4.5%. Uh, we're calling it Petite Cezanne. Uh, we threw in some elderflower and we're bottle conditioning it with, uh, Maine wildflower honey. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a good one, especially as this weather changes, hopefully for the warmer and spring starts to, to get to spring. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming eventually. Yeah. Uh, we've got a comment here from KLO for show for show. Uh, he or she says, love Oxbow. We live in Florida, but we just got married at the blending and bottling facility in September. 
And how can we get Oxbow beer in Florida? So do you ever send beer even in limited drops to Florida? Oh, uh, yes, we do, right? There's probably some in Florida right now. Um, I don't know what area of Florida she's in, but we have a really good relationship with Coppertail Brewing in Tampa and Green Bench Brewing in St. Pete. So um, Florida has really nice laws where they're allowed to pour guest beers and Green Bench always has Oxbow bottles at the least, if not draft also. Uh, I can vouch for that. I was there in January. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we were down there earlier this year and brewed a collaboration with Coppertail, which will be coming out probably in another month. So keep your ears open for that if you're in the Tampa area, at least. Uh, I cannot divulge any naming or things to look out other than there will be a Oxbow <laughs> Coppertail collab. Coming Watch out. for something. Yeah. <laughs> Oxtail seems logical, but probably too logical. But <laughs> Oh, you're making right. me hungry. <laughs> me too, right? <laughs> um, let me let me uh, take a couple of other things here. So your Desert Island beers, although I love those selections. Uh, Jasker says that's not enough calories for a Desert Island. Um, and I think he's saying Desert Island. He's making some sort of pun there. Um, and then uh, UFF, Urban Farm Fermentary, asks, where does your wildflower honey come from in Maine? Uh, well, we do. I was trying to point out uh, we do keep bees here. So we do have a state which we would call wildflower honey, um, which is not single source, but we do keep that for, we do a uh, spontaneous cool ship brew native wild with honey. I think the first time it's coming out, will be in a few months here. Uh -huh. um, other than that, we do source honey from Swan, uh, which is an amazing operation. Not too far from here. It's about a 45 minute drive. So we're even yep. able to just go and pick it up. Uh, yeah. We have quite a few honey beers these days. If anyone is is really into to honey beer or honey in general or saving bees in our environment, you should keep your uh, <laughs> keep supporting these these beers. We have probably about seven or eight beers that incorporate honey uh, mm. currently. So that's yeah. good. And Urban Fire Fermentary, of course, no stranger to the bees. They say go bees with a bee emoji, of course. <laughs> um, and Ben Primo says, hi, Eli. Uh, they're talking to each yeah. other? I guess so, yeah. I guess so. If you guys want to, you know, hang out, that's that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so let me, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, you've talked a little bit about the Oxbow team, which is, you know, it is family, and it's it's really, a, you know, a tough time to, to make the decisions that, that did need to be made. But how are uh, you guys doing? How is Tim doing? How is the Oxbow, you know, uh, leadership and, and the, the operational folks? How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing great. Actually, just before this started, we had our, uh, we do at least a weekly Zoom um, kind of upper management check-in, mm -hmm. uh, which is really fun and awesome and necessary. And it's great to see everyone's face. Uh, there's usually some switching of headgear into some <laughs> costumes or wigs, which keep it light and airy. Uh, yeah, everyone's in great spirits. Um, despite everything we're you know, we're quick to make the the changes that were necessary and uh you know as long as wholesalers are ordering beer and people are drinking beer i think we'll we'll limp by and, and hopefully get in to the other end of this uh i like to point out and, and encourage everyone that they should be drinking beer it's a great source of calories and sustenance and especially unfiltered beer you have a lot of nutrients and probiotics and things that sustain life and at least make you happier in that moment so <laughs> I'll, I'll take another sip to that that sounds good i'll join you there <clears throat> yeah i think you know i guess i've been trying to, to illustrate the point you know with the three different locations there's a there's dizzy the cat again amazing <laughs> love that cat dizzy beer cat on instagram follow follow the cat um you know, with the three different locations, that's one factor. But the but the other side of it is the production of your beers, for the most part, does take time. So you're able to to make the adjustments, and um, you know, and, and so perhaps you're. 
I feel like you're less impacted than others would be if they're trying to turn beer around every three weeks or so. Yeah, the the fastest beer for us is six weeks. So it, it is hard, a little more difficult to pivot and be as nimble, but uh, at the same time, we are insulated in that that, that beer also is going to benefit from even more tank time. Um, so on that front, we're feeling good. We're just making smart decisions on what to refill the tanks with and what's going to, uh, what is going to definitely benefit from time. What is going to sell and do well in the package that it needs to get into like cans, uh, and, or our four pack 330 milliliter bottles, four packs. Those do really well for us. So, yeah, uh, we're just concentrating on those for now. Unfortunately, uh, you know, kegs will be, be sitting empty and, um, hopefully not for too long, but you know, you have to, you have to make those adjustments. Uh, for sure. But you, you know, even, even more than the beers, making sure all our, our staff that is still on is, is healthy and happy and in a good mindset and feeling comfortable as they can continuing to work, uh, which we have luckily everyone's in a really good mindset and, and feeling healthy. And so each, each day comes and mm. you find the good in it. Yeah, no, I think, think that's a great message right there. <clears throat> we've got uh, just a couple more minutes left with uh, with Fava here. Uh, we've got uh, something, Tanti Bachi Ibuana Fortuna, see you this fall. That's from Kathy Fura. Uh, that's Italian, I know that much. Uh, crispy Turn says, says, hi, Fava, it's Crispy, and then uh, then goes on to, to dominate after that. How many Lupolos are super crispy? Oh, at least a, at least a four-pack. Lisa Fortback and Crispy then adds, you're beautiful, Fava, which is true. Um, and, you know, you, Oxbow has a lot of fans around the world, which is uh, amazing. Um, not surprising, but amazing. And so I'll give you the last the last minute to kind of pitch why Oxbow, because this has been kind of fun. So you can think about your thoughts while I thank a few people. Uh, this episode of the virtual tour has been uh, produced by Victoria Fura behind the scenes. She's been grabbing all of these crazy comments and questions, which is fun. Um, we're sponsored by Carhop, carhopme.com, which is a, a beer and alcohol delivery service kind of centralized right now to Portland, but they're looking to expand in other parts of Maine. Uh, you can get a lot of beer through uh, Carhop. You can get Oxbow as well at certain retail locations. And if you use code BREWBUS, you'll save 50% off the delivery fee. And then if you enjoyed this conversation with Michael, you can always throw a tip in our virtual tip bucket, which is at www.themainbrewbus.com. You'll see a tour grouping called Virtual Tours. And then there you can actually give us uh, something, $5, $10, uh, anywhere up to $100. If you do uh, throw $100 in the tip bucket, We'll match that with a gift card, which never expires. And you can use that in the future to visit great places like Oxbow Blending and Bottling or any of the other great places that we visit on our tours. Okay, so before you get the last minute here, King's Cooch says a rumor that Fava was dressed as Gritty at the Mariners game. Confirm? <laughs> uh, I do know Gritty personally, and we've hung out twice. Uh, and the third time was in... Portland of all places. He came up for a Mariners game, uh, which was awesome because if you go to a Flyers game in Philadelphia, you can't get near him. Uh, his fandom really is, uh, it supersedes <laughs> everything. I think he's the greatest mascot in all of sports. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of people speculate because they never saw me and him in the same place. So they, they think that I would. It's, it's probably logical, yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, Gritty is uh, uh, unbelievably popular, and uh, I'm sure it's sad to be a little sidelined right now. Uh, it's, and that, that, uh, that mascot of the Philadelphia Flyers is only a couple of years old. It's a, it's a new concept, so that's, yep. that's amazing, too. Yep. Um, all right, so I'll give you the, the final word here. So why Oxbow? When people are looking... Uh, there's so many reasons to say, but I, I think we... And I don't want to throw anyone else under the bus, but we put a lot of love and care into our beer. Uh, we are on an 18-acre farm. As I mentioned earlier, all of our beer is made with well water. We go through a lot of effort. It's very difficult to make beer out here in the middle of the woods. Um, we don't have three-phase power. We're not set up for uh, a municipal water source and wastewater. Uh, it's a lot of work. 
I think most of our fans out there definitely have some bottles in their cellar. And I think a beautiful thing is these beers age awesomely. So if you have it in your cellar, hopefully you do and have a nice stockpile that you're able to pull from. But if you don't, you can feel great about buying those beers and, and lining your cellar with them. We're very transparent with all of our dating. Every bottle has a bottled update. We, we proudly list our production time with how long it took to produce that beer to get it into your hands. And we'll put it and enjoy within time frame. So we spend a lot of time on quality and quality control to make sure that you're going to get a beer that's going to taste awesome, whether you drink it now or throw it in your cellar for a year. Uh, nice. I, I will say I really, really taken back by how many posts we're getting via Instagram and tags of people all over the world really uh, enjoying Oxo beer during this crazy time. And, and I hope they keep coming. Uh, it's really uplifting and, and warms my heart and the whole team's heart when, when you guys are tagging us and, uh, and drinking our beer. It really, really feels good. So hopefully keep, keep it coming. We spent a lot of uh, time and energy to get that beer out to you. We don't make that much, but we do spread it around the world. And uh, so please enjoy it, drink it, so we can keep making more. Well said, Michael. To find out more, you can go to oxbowbeer.com. If you live in the, uh, the southern Maine area, you can actually order your beer online for curbside pickup at Blending and Bottling location in Portland, which is open Tuesday through Saturday, 12 to 4. They're actually doing delivery from 4 to 6, uh, I think, in those same days. So you can you can order and you can have it delivered, which is amazing. Uh, the Oxbow Beer Garden in Oxford has a to-go window. Uh, that's open Thursday through Sunday, 4 to 9. And the brewery itself is doing curbside pickup Tuesday through Saturday. I didn't record the hours for that. Do you know those offhand? Yeah, uh, noon to 4. So noon to 4, okay. But, you know... Uh, things are changing, so check social media and check their website, which is uh, remarkably up to date as well, uh, before you venture out. But if you find Oxbow Beer in your local retail location, please do support them. They are a mainstay of the Maine brewing community and are a great beacon for uh, for Maine beer out there in the rest of the world. The final thoughts we have here is I Blame Jim says love Oxbow from Virginia's number one fan. Yeah. Bill Jr. 1980 says cheers. thank you guys and cheers. And um, with that, being said i thank you very much for this time this has been great cheers thank and i look you. i look forward to having a beer with you in person in the future so uh, soon soon enough cheers awesome thank cheers you. thanks thanks mike uh enjoy the day and thanks for watching everybody we'll see you next time